sir we shall start sir hello sir shall we start sir uh, ah yeah, ya yeah, ya yeah. no problem yes thank you good morning all of you sorry for the delay due to the serious network issue there was a delay actually so hope you understand uh, i welcome all of the, all the participants uh, to this uh, webinar on nuclear uh, battery atomic battery by debanga batasali operation coordinator at uh, superposition srinagar robotics instructor at robo champs bright champs thank you sir thank, thank you for coming as a resource person for this particular uh, webinar so uh, let me give a brief introduction of this uh, uh, batasali sir so his designations are x gnc at avionics intern x avionics system engineer at uh, om, om space rocket and exploration private limited operations coordinator at superposition srinagar robotics instructor at robo champs bright champs independent researcher author of three research papers two conference proceedings and one published in ijert sir on behalf of chalapati institute of engineering and technology department of computer science and engineering i welcome you for this webinar sir over to you sir yeah 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 uh, like uh, thank you and i am uh, really uh, i mean uh, grateful that like uh, you have uh, invited uh, me over for this uh, webinar and like uh, i got this platform to like uh, deliver such a topic to a wide range of audience uh, the students or the professors and all teachers and whatever so yeah uh, so as like uh, friends has already told so my name is uh, devanga bhatshali so yeah uh, i was an uh, ex uh, gnc avionics engineer and apart from that i was also a avionics system engineer at om space rocket and exploration i have worked with uh, And like I am also working as an operation coordinator at Super uh, Position Three in Adam, and right now uh, I am working as a robot instructor at Robo Champs. So yeah, uh, so that's uh, my profile. And uh, okay, so I'm going to share my screen. Is the screen visible? Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, today's uh, webinar is about uh, nuclear batteries or uh, atomic batteries. Okay, so. yeah so like uh, and uh, we all know that an uh, atom is the smallest uh, constituent unit of ordinary matter that uh, constitutes a chemical element and uh, every solid liquid gas and plasma are composed of uh, neutral or uh, ionized atoms now atoms are extremely small okay now atoms are extremely small and typically around 100 picometers across so uh, inside an atom there is a nucleus so uh, smashing the uh, tiny subatomic nucleus generates immense amounts of energy now uh, in terms of physics so uh, the highest possible form of energy we all know that e equals mc square so where m is the mass and c is the speed of light here yeah. now nuclear energy uh, uh, yeah now uh, nuclear energy uh, is being uh, developed for various applications Now, uh, one of them is like uh, for generating power for basic like uh, user needs. Like we all uh, use uh, nuclear energy power for uh, high amounts of power. We use it, uh, or we need a nuclear reactor. <coughs> okay, so we need a nuclear reactor. But for uh, like uh, uh, intermediate or like small amounts of power, like for a uh, hundred or uh, or ten or hundred kilowatts of power, so the nuclear reactors are not feasible enough. so uh, here we need a small size power generating uh, source and uh, these are called uh, nuclear batteries or atomic batteries or they are known as nuclear generators or whatever like we may want to call it okay. now these nuclear batteries are small in size uh, generates a good amount of power portable to use and not like dangerous as the big and powerful nuclear reactors <clears throat> now uh, 
coming to uh, like uh, the nuclear energy was like first term in the 1900s. So the uh, term nuclear energy and the research already started in 1900s. So later in 1913, so uh, Henry J. G. Mosley he uh, termed the uh, or he uh, coined the term the beta cell and he developed the beta cell. So uh, beta cell basically use the uh, uh, beta particles or the beta rays, whatever you say. And uh, after that, there are several uh, research experiments, developments, and innovations and evolutions that happened. And later on, uh, Paul Brown developed a radioisotope electric power system which used strontium 90. And uh, the, uh, later on, he used it. Uh, later on, he used in 1945, he used the uh, radium 226. Okay. Now, uh, these. Uh, uh, elements or these devices are uh, very small. So they are like a grapefruit sized device. So the radioisotope thermoelectric generator or the R RTG commonly called, it basically uh, in 1950s, it used the plutonium 238. So uh, later on from 1950s, the nuclear batteries or nuclear generators were used for space applications. And then in 1954, so the Radio Corporation of America it uh, developed re uh, small radio receivers and hearing aids. And later on in 1959, the nuclear battery was uh, actually patented. So before that, no, no patent was done, but in 1959, so the first battery was patented by Tristan Labs. So in uh, now from after that, in 1960s, it was mainly used by USA's and uh, Russians uh, for space applications. And in 1970s, it was uh, also used for medical applications. In 1980s, it was used for industrial and engineering applications. And after that, uh, during 1990s, there are uh, like massive and uh, huge amount of research and developments that are going on. And after that, uh, like uh, we uh, never heard of uh, nuclear batteries and uh, all the nuclear generators or atomic batteries. Like, like there's a reason why I'll uh, you, uh, I'll tell you like uh, after uh, some time. So uh, during uh, 2018, so uh, this university in Russia uh, developed a nuclear battery. And like after uh, the current, uh, like in the current nuclear technologies, are uh, there are current developments happening in nuclear technology? And uh, after 2020 and after like uh, in 2022 also, so current nuclear technologies are being developed. So uh, this is the prototype of the nuclear battery developed by the Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology. Okay, now. Uh, Nuclear, uh, so atomic or nuclear energy is like uh, gener uh, it's gener uh, generated inside a reactor. So the heat inside the reactor is generated by uh, tiny bullets like neutrons. So when a, a neutron strikes nu uh, atomic nucleus, it splits into two releasing, Im uh, it, uh, I mean, splits into two, like uh, releasing immense amounts of radiation and heat. So uh, additionally, like uh, other neutrons hit other nuclei and uh, it builds up a chain reaction. So it generates tremendous amounts of radiation and heat out of a small amount of nuclear fuel. So the most practically used nuclear fuel is uranium. We all uh, know that uranium is mostly used as a nuclear fuel for uh, nuclear reactors and nuclear power stations. And uh, so uh, this radioactivity is the biggest danger for the environment because uh, radiation, uh, like radiation is a long lasting effect, which is unstoppable. And to slow down the radiation or radioactivity, we have to slow down the reaction, like which will uh, slow down the energy generation and finally will stop the radiation. So that's how we have to slow uh, radiation and uh, like radioactivity of the nuclear process. So now the radiation is the emission of alpha, beta, and gamma particles. So three particles are there, like alpha, beta, and gamma particles. So these three particles constitute the uh, radiation emission. Okay. Now. Uh, Alpha particles are the combination of protons and neutrons. Okay, so alpha particles are the combination of protons and neutrons. Uh, yeah, yeah, like uh, you can see, yeah. So, okay. So uh, alpha particles are the uh, a, a combination of protons and neutrons and beta particles are the electrons or positrons. And gamma particles are the photons, which is the most harmful radioactive emission. So uh, gamma, if uh, gamma rays like, uh, directed towards a human or an animal or something. So like uh, they will start uh, they will affect the animal or the human or that uh, or that thing. So unlike a, a normal uh, nuclear reactor, a nuclear uh, battery is a device which uses energy from the decay of the radioisotope. 
So uh, we are using a radioisotope that is the fuel for the uh, nuclear reactions or the nuclear generation of energy. And uh, uh, we uh, use the decay of that uh, or the byproduct of that uh, fuel. So it's not harmful. Okay. So the uh, lifespan of the nuclear battery is like for decays, like uh, and it's uh, 200 times more efficient uh, than uh, than the presently available uh, lithium batteries or nickel cadmium or like other type of batteries available in the market okay so now uh we have to learn we have to know, like what is radioactivity before we move on so radioactivity is the emission of ionizing radiation from nuclear decay okay <clears throat> now what happens so this is a radioactive element or a radioactive atom and it uh, emits certain particles so it emits basically three particles so alpha, beta, and gamma particles. And uh, there is a radiation going on simultaneously at the same time. So when the particles are emitted from the radioactive atom, so it generates energy. Now this is known as radioactive decay. Now, so radioactive decay or radioactivity is the uh, emission of ionizing radiation from nuclear decay. So we have three types of radioactive decay. So first is the alpha decay where uh, alpha a particle is released and uh, from the same atom or from the same radioactive atom a daughter nuclei is also released for a beta decay a beta particle is released and uh, i mean or, or produced and at the same time a daughter nuclei is also uh, released from the radioactive atom and for the gamma decay it doesn't release any kind of particle it releases rays so gamma uh, uh, in the gamma decay, gamma rays are released, and at the same time, a daughter nuclei is also re released. Now, how does the uh, uh, nuclear battery work, or what is the working mechanism? So, the nuclear battery or the reactor both work on the principle of chain reaction of nuclear materials, which ultimately leads to the emission of radioactive particles. So, uh, in a nuclear reactor, there are nuclear fuels which act as a source of energy. So uh, the reactor reacts on the principle of chain reaction of nuclear materials. Okay. Now uh, uh, uranium. Uh, so uranium is the most uh, practically used nuclear fuel worldwide. So uh, we already know that, and we have talked about that also. And uh, uh, the reactor uses moderating materials like cadmium or boron which are also called moderators. So these moderators, what it does, these moderators actually control the uh, reaction process. Okay. Now, if I use a cadmium or a bo boron uh, uh, moderator, so that uh, moderator will basically control the reaction process or the speed of the reaction. So I can increase or decrease the speed using the uh, moderators. Now, uh, so uh, the, what they basically do is like they act, actually de uh, uh, de increase the decrease the uh, chain reaction inside the rea reactor chamber. So inside the reactor chamber, uh, like uh, there are uh, uh, reflecting materials available, uh, like uh, materials uh, like uh, beryllium, which are uh, they are known as reflectors. So what this reflector does, like when the uh, chain reaction is going on, on the, all the like uh, uh, particles are released. So these particles reflect on the reflectors or like for the, uh, like uh, here I am taking example of a beryllium. So they'll reflect on the beryllium uh, reflector and they'll uh, like uh, hit back again. Okay, so like this, so like that, it keeps on uh, like uh, going again and again. So this is like a cycle. So just, uh, so uh, this cycle keeps on repeating and like it goes on and on. So like that, the chain reaction uh, happens and the uh, reactivity continues. So that's how a, a basic uh, nuclear generator or a nuclear uh, power plant works. Okay. So now the nuclear battery, on the other hand, uses uh, emitted radioactive particles. Now, uh, when the radioactive particles, when they are emitted, so a nuclear battery uses that particles. They don't uh, use a chamber, something like that. They don't have reflectors or something like that. They use the reflect, uh, emitted radioactive particles. Now, uh, these radioactive particles fall on a generating device and they generate the electricity. So that's why nuclear battery is much smaller as compared to the nuclear reactors that we see in uh, in our day to day life. And uh, the nuclear battery mainly uses uh, like uh, the emitted alpha or the beta particles to produce energy. Like we don't use gamma particles here uh, or the gamma rays here because uh, it's like too uh, dangerous and it's harmful also. So 
so uh like inside the nuclear battery the alpha and the beta particles hit the electrodes at the end of the battery and these electrodes create a, uh, a potential difference and uh, which in turn produce the electricity to run the loops so uh, uh here we can see a diagram of a uh, tritium nuclear battery and uh, i think uh, someone has raised the hand like uh, i know sir any question you sir okay, okay like uh, like if there are questions like you can uh, have the questions and you can ask me at the end of the session okay so uh, this is the uh, schematic diagram of a uh, tritium nuclear battery so uh, these are the tritium cells uh, the tritium elements or the tritium fuel cell uh, and these are the uh, beta cells used so these uh, tritium cells emit radiation and this hits on these uh, photovoltaic cells and these photovoltaic cells uh, on the other hand uh, convert the uh, radiation or the heat from the radiation into electricity and it uh, runs the system or the loop okay so uh, uh, so we now we get to know that the nuclear the atom battery use conversion methods to produce electricity so it converts heat or radiation into electricity so uh, like nuclear materials are by products from the nuclear reaction or spent nuclear fuels or like uh, nuclear waste can be used as a source of energy in a nuclear battery because they are cheaper to get they are uh, like easier to uh, uh, easily uh, like they are easily available and like uh, we can uh, have them whenever we uh, want to have them okay and uh, so these materials are tightly sealed in a, a chamber with the uh, insulators and all other materials and the energy generating device is connected to the chamber okay or that uh, container wherever we have placed that fuel or the material and uh, uh, they produce electricity or they convert the energy into electricity so now now these nuclear batteries can uh, run for almost half a century so this is like a 50 years so like a single battery can run for 50 years whereas uh, a lithium uh, battery that uh, we use in our uh, day to day life or like in our phones or laptops or other things they uh, hardly last for like 2 uh, to 3 years after that they start degrading or they start losing their uh, like uh, capacity so we have to keep on charging the, the devices like 2 uh, to 3 times a day but in case of a nuclear battery like uh, if it started it will go on like uh, delivering the same amount of power for almost like 50 years like whatever the uh, life is for that element particular element it will deliver like in general it's almost like 50 years it can deliver power so yeah now uh, why do we need uh, like a nuclear battery so now the question may arise like uh, why do we need nuclear battery so like uh, in a nuclear power plant the uh, nuclear reactor generates a lot of nuclear waste okay so uh, and the spent nuclear fuels and by product as a uh, result of the like uh, the energy generation and the nuclear fission so uh, these needs to be handled very carefully uh, because uh, these uh, these are like uh, really harmful and radioactive in nature and like if it gets in contact with uh, anything outside the plant it may harm the environment or like uh, whoever is like in uh, in contact with that material okay so uh, as a result like we can use the same material uh, we can uh, take the uh, desired uh, materials out from the uh, waste of uh, waste fuels or the spent fuels and we can uh, use them for in a nuclear uh, battery so like uh, it's like a uh, if you compare like uh, with a chemical battery so the nuclear battery is characterized by like uh, they have high volumetric energy density and uh, yeah and they have high volumetric energy density and like uh, uh, they are uh, they can uh, end, endure uh, harsh conditions like they can survive harsh conditions also unlike other batteries like uh, which are uh, like too uh, delicate or they are like too uh fragile in uh, harsh conditions nuclear batteries can survive harsh conditions that's why uh, nuclear batteries or nuclear generators are used for space programs so that's why nasa uses uh, nuclear generators in their rovers or in the uh, robots they send to uh, 
other planets like Mars or Moon or whatever. So basically, they use because it can uh, survive the space uh, environment or it can survive the hard environments on other planets and uh, other areas environments. So uh, and also it's portable in size. Like uh, if we have to deliver the same amount of power, we will need a large uh, other battery. Like if we are using lithium battery, then we will need a, a large battery uh, for, this, for the same purpose or for the same application. Furthermore, like uh, uh, an essential uh, ingredient of the nuclear battery is the waste. Uh, I have already told you, it's the waste from the nuclear power plant. So, like it depends. Uh, it it depends on the nuclear power plant. Basically, if uh, if I am to uh, manufacture a nuclear battery, if I have to manufacture a nuclear battery, I have to depend on the nuclear power plants uh, near me. So, like uh, when the fuel gets uh, finished or uh, when the fuel is uh, spent in the nuclear plant. Then the, uh, I can get those uh, spent nuclear fuels and I can use them for a nuclear battery. Okay, so like uh, new technologies uh, like allow like uh, us to make more smaller, safer, and more efficient and longer lasting nuclear batteries. And like uh, they, uh, yeah, and like when the uh, then it also reduces the cost of manufacturing the batteries because we don't have to actually rely on raw materials. We can get those materials from a nuclear power plant. And uh, the cost also decreases. And uh, yeah, like nuclear batteries can power like uh, wireless devices. So they can be power, they can mainly power wireless devices so that uh, you can uh, go on and on and on. And uh, uh, like nuclear reactors, uh, when the nuclear uh, general nuclear reactor or nuclear power plant uh, generates electricity, and uh, they uh, they uh, but uh, here in a nuclear battery they don't uh, uh, like use the chain reaction unlike a nuclear reactor. Okay, so the nuclear battery uh, has no moving parts, so it's very compact. Like uh, we can have a nuclear battery that's the size of a phone, and we can keep it in our pocket, and we can uh, travel. So we can carry it's like a portable power bank you can uh, use that thing okay and uh, it's like uh, killing two birds with a single stone like we are not degrading the environment we are using the uh, waste to create a new thing and at the same time we are uh, like uh, decreasing the size of the huge uh, reactors to a small compact uh, portable power form and we can use it for future uh, technologies and like for future uh, research and development process. Okay, so uh, yeah, like uh, right now it's not available anywhere. Like it's only available for certain applications. But yeah, I think in a couple of years it will be available in like uh, in uh, it will be available just like any other type of battery in stores or any kind of general store. It will be available. Okay. Uh, so uh, this is an example of a nuclear generator. So it's uh, the nuclear generator from the Nuclear Energy Commission, uh, Canada. So it's a two for, uh, 2400 kilowatt thermal nuclear generator. So it's a thermal nuclear generator. Now uh, it uses a low enriched uh, uranium, that's a U-235 uh, fuel, which is uh, 35 kgs in weight. And uh, it uh, runs uh, on a temperature of 550 degrees Celsius. Okay, so it's a thermal uh, generator and it can run for a period of 15 years. So once started, it can run continuously for a period of 15 years. So like uh, uh, there is no stopping or something like that. And apart from that, uh, the fuel temperature can uh, or the peak uh, fuel temperature can uh, go up to a, uh, a temperature of 600 degrees if it's running on its full power. And uh, yes, there uh, since it's a thermal generator, there are certain uh, heat losses. So that's uh, around 30 kilowatts of uh, thermal heat loss. And uh, the, as, as, like if the fuels are like exposed to the radiation when they are like uh, having the uh, reactivity or the radiation is going on inside the reactor or the uh, nuclear generator, so they can uh, have an estimated, uh, they can uh, go to estimated temperature 600 degrees Celsius uh, with a continuous running of 100 hours. After that, like uh, we have to decrease the temperature and then again we can uh, run it for an, again, another 100 hours. So this is an experimental value, like it can increase or decrease, and uh, the Carnot efficiency is around 54%. Whereas uh, if we convert it to electricity, it uh, conversion efficiency is 25%. It's for a thermal generator, so thermal nuclear generator. Okay. So uh, 
yeah now uh, we have another generator that is the uh, electric generator so it's the same nuclear generator but it uh, it is the 600 kilowatt of the nuclear generator electric generator so what it has is like uh, in uh, just like unlike a uh, uh, thermal nuclear generator which has a shielding and inside we have a reactor core and uh, inside the reactor core the nuclear reactions are going on and it has uh, these vaporizers so when the uh, water is passed through this it generates heat and it turns it into a steam so the steam is converted and it turns the turbine and it generates electricity so this is like a uh, thermal power plant so we are using it like it's just like a normal uh, thermal power plant or a normal nuclear power plant but in case of electric nuclear generator so what happens is it's also using the same thing but it's running an alternator in place of a uh, turbine or something so the turbine runs the alternator and uh, it can again regenerate the same heat again and again and it like it runs in a cycle okay so it runs in a cycle and it can generate the same amount of uh, energy and heat and power from the same system like it needs 600 kilowatts and it will need to 40 kilowatts for the same amount of uh, power delivery okay now uh, these are some like uh, market uh, things like uh, these are the amount of uh, base load. If you are taking a base load 95% capacity for, if you are running it for 15 to 20 years, so then uh, this is the core life. And this is like, uh, so these are the diesel fuel costs. Okay. So this for uh, per kilowatt hour. And uh, yeah, like it, uh, so the nuclear fuel or the cost of the uh, nuclear fuel, it actually uh, decreases the cost. So yeah, now, uh, uh, we have a uh, certain conversion method. So, uh, as I already told, like uh, the nuclear battery runs a conversion method. So, the heat is converted into electricity. So, like there are two ways to convert the decaying radiation uh, to useful electrical energy. So, uh, the first one is the thermal conversion. So, in this conversion, the uh, output power is a function of the temperature difference. So, it means that uh, we use the uh, uh, high temperature or the high temperature or the radiation uh, of the, uh, the uh, temperature from the radiation of the uh, material uh, and turn that into electricity. So, uh, and we have uh, another uh, conversion method that is the uh, non thermal. So, uh, in non thermal, the output power is not a function of the uh, temperature difference, it doesn't depend on the temperature. Okay. Now, Okay, so thermal conversion has uh, three types of thermal conversions are available, three or four types of. So uh, the first one is the thermionic converter. So uh, in a thermionic converter, so the nuclear fuel is sandwiched between two thermal plates. So there are two thermal plates available and these two thermal plates, in between them, there is a nuclear fuel available. Okay, so which creates, uh, and when the uh, radiation starts, it, when the uh, radiation decay starts or the, uh, Radioactivity decay, radioactive decay starts, it generates heat, and those uh, and that generated heat creates a, a temperature difference, which in turn converts the heat into electricity. So, th so basically, thermocouples are used as uh, converters or the plate for this uh, thing, and it converts the heat into electricity. And the next one is thermoisotopic thermoelectric generator. So, these are the generators that are basically used. Uh, in many of the applications, they are used by NASA and uh, other space agencies for their uh, rockets and other uh, space vehicles and launch vehicles or uh, rovers, etc. So they are mainly used because they are like more reliable than the thermionic converters. So what the uh, RTG or the radioactive thermoelectric generator does is like uh, it can uh, it, uh, the nuclear fuel is basically capsule. So here we can see that the nuclear fuel is actually capsuled in a, uh, there is a capsule inside which the nuclear fuel is uh, contained and it's surrounded by thermocouples. So uh, the heat trans or heat converting materials or thermocouples are actually uh, surrounding the uh, fuel. So uh, when the heat is generated, so it uh, directly converts the heat into electricity. So th there is no need of any kind of uh, sandwiching or any kind of plate is there. So there are so, uh, as in terms of building or the in terms of materials, so they are they are more reliable and they are more uh, they they are more uh, finished quality products. Okay. 
Now we have the thermal photovoltaic cell. So uh, I've already talked about that. So the tritium uh, or whatever cell we are using or whatever fuel we are using, it's sandwiched between these two photovoltaic plates uh, or the cells. And when the uh, heat is generated, it, uh, so it uh, converts the, uh, the heat uh, and when directed towards the photovoltaic cell into uh, electricity. Okay, and we have another. So this is the Stirling radioisotopic generator or SRG. So SRGs are uh, like uh, uh, almost uh, like uh, uh, like they uh, resemble the RTGs. So they are most like RTGs, but uh, yeah, there is a slight difference. So here, what happens like the uh, SRG is a uh, generator, or we can call it as a generator, and which uh, runs on the Stirling engine. Okay, so we uh, know that Stirling engine was like uh, introduced way back and it used like uh, steam power and all of that in a uh, car. Okay, so uh, what happens like uh, it's, uh, there is a heater and uh, the hot end of the Stirling uh, converter reaches, high, when the hot end of the Stirling converter actually reaches high temperature, so uh, the uh, heat, so there is helium inside the air. Uh, inside that uh, uh, that heater, so when uh, it uh, heats the helium, it drives the piston basically. So that piston uh, helps it run the uh, generator or the motor, and uh, as a result, electricity is generated. So it's almost similar to that uh, thing, but uh, it's more like a generator type. So it, uh, the piston is uh, actually uh, moving, so it rotates the alternator of the generator, and it generates the power. So now uh, these are the main kind of uh, nuclear batteries. So they are non-thermal conversion type of nuclear batteries. So these are non-thermal conversion. So the first one is uh, 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 alpha uh, alpha voltaic cells. So yeah, an alpha voltaic cell it includes at least uh, one layer of semiconductor material, maybe a PN junction or a uh, NP junction, or a PNP or NPN or whatever there is. So it absorbs and converts the layer, uh, uh, layer on the uh, semiconductor layer and the uh, alpha particle emitter. So whenever the uh, alpha particles are emitted or uh, on the semiconductor layer, uh, it basically uh, absorbs them and converts them into uh, electricity. So suppose uh, alpha particles from the alpha uh, particle emitter are emitted towards the uh, PN junction, suppose of the semiconductor material. Then it will absorb and convert the layer uh, into a portion of energy, and it will uh, uh, direct that energy into that uh, through the uh, through those uh, electrodes, and uh, it will create a potential difference, and it will uh, like uh, yeah, it will like direct the uh, energy into the loads of the system, so it will uh, create electricity. Uh, now uh, we have uh, beta voltage cells, so. What beta voltage cell actually does, like uh, here we can see that uh, there are two electrodes available. So one is A, or suppose B. So alpha beta particles are, uh, I mean, emitted or bombarded at the same time. So when uh, the radiation happens, or when the radioactive materials are, are radiating energy or alpha beta particle. So uh, when it's uh, between, when it moves between the plates, it creates a potential difference. And as a result, the potential difference uh, actually uh, runs the whole system or the or the load. So, like it's basic, uh, simple, like uh, creating a potential difference using the uh, radioactivity, and then in uh, result, it runs the load. So, and now we have uh, direct charging uh, generators. So, uh, direct charging uh, generators are uh, like. Uh, they consist of a capacitor charge. So they mainly consist of a capacitor, a capacitor which is uh, charged. Okay. Now, uh, the current, uh, 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 basically, all the charged particles from the radioactive layer uh, are uh, deposited on one of the electrodes, and it basically charges the capacitor, and then the electricity is generated. So uh, what happens, like, uh, so we can see that there are a couple of uh, capacitors and uh, all of these available, uh, this rounded figure. So uh, all the capacitors available. So whenever uh, we uh, just uh, bombard or the radioactivity is happening or the radioactive decay is happening, it just uh, the, uh, electrons or the uh, particles just uh, charge the capacitors and then in turn it will uh, 
uh, charge the or it will deliver the power desired. Now we have uh, optoelectric generators. So uh, they are almost they are interesting generators. So because like uh, here a beta emitter uh, simulates an uh, excimer mixture. So what happens like uh, we are uh, using a light source, suppose an LED, or uh, so we are uh, directing towards the DMD micro disk. So then it uh, displays it uh, using so uh, microscope or powerful uh, something like that, which can like deliver the uh, focus, uh, the intensity of the power, and then it uh, focuses on this uh, th these uh, plates or where uh, the, there is the uh, uh, isotopic material available. So uh, what happens like uh, now the advantage of this like uh, design is that the uh, Electrode assemblies are not needed, and the most of the beta particle can escape the finely divided bulk material and like contribute to the uh, battery's uh, net or the required power. So, yeah, now we have another type of conversion uh, methods uh, which use uh, reciprocating mecha electromechanical batteries. Now, what happens is like uh, electromechanical atomic batteries use the buildup of charge uh, between two plates. And it pulls uh, like uh, the thing. So uh, there is a radioactive uh, material uh, available beneath this plate, and this is a uh, it can be a copper chip or a conductive material. So whenever the radioactivity is happening, so it will uh, pull this material downward. So once this material is pulled downward, so it will build up charge here, and whenever it's released, so it will release the immense amount of energy at the same time. So again, it will pull the uh, plate. And again, it will be released. So, like this goes on and on, and it uh, continuously delivers power uh, for the uh, requirement. So, uh, like uh, these are the types of conversions. So, like we have thermal conversions and we have non thermal conversions, and these are the type of thermal and non thermal conversion methods and the uh, batteries or generators that we use. So, uh, yeah, now uh, coming to the whole. Uh, like a voltage, current, and efficiency of a nuclear generator. So, uh, nuclear batteries basically use the radioisotope decaying process to uh, produce energy for our needs. And uh, the lifetime of a uh, normal uh, nuclear battery is around uh, 10 to 20 years. So, that's for a normal nuclear battery. But, like, uh, it also depends on the field uh, or the material that we are using. So, sometimes it can go up to 50. 200 to 400 500 or like thousands of years like it depends on the material and the life it has so uh, like during the process so uh, the battery gives out uh, its maximum output okay so it will deliver the same constant output throughout this lifetime and uh, it's not like that after a certain period of time it will like uh, stop delivering the uh, output and the uh, we have uh, we have low power, we have low uh, output. So it's not like that. It will deliver the same amount of power for years and years. And uh, yeah, uh, the output of the battery uh, uh, like depends on the fuel and the construction of the battery also. So like uh, if we use a nickel 63 as a fuel source, so it increases the battery power output. So uh, the PIN configuration structure uh, like uh, uh, that's that uh, basically the diamond battery. So, uh, so I think uh, like uh, most of uh, we have heard about the uh, nuclear diamond battery. So uh, diamond is used as a, a nuclear uh, fuel. So uh, here uh, the PIN configuration structure or the diamond semiconductor boosts the voltage and increases the power output. So like for a normal nuclear battery, uh, the average uh, open circuit voltage and uh, uh, the short circuit currents are like 1.02 volts and 1.27 microamperes respectively. So uh, the maximum output power uh, uh, like of uh, 0.93 uh, uh, microwatts can be uh, obtained uh, at uh, 0.92 volts. Okay. So uh, this uh, power output uh, corresponds to a specific uh, power of about uh, uh, 3300 uh, milliwatt hours per gram and uh, which uh, is uh, 10 times more than a uh, commercial chemical cells okay, so it's 10 times more uh, or uh, like more than it can also be more than 10 times uh, uh, 
powerful than uh, commercial chemicals are. So for basic atomic batteries, the efficiency is around like 0.1 to 5 percent. Then for high efficiency beta voltaic cells, the efficiency is around 6 to 8 percent. Okay. Now for uh, if there is a ionic uh, uh, pneumatic uh, uh, atomic battery, the efficiency can reach up to 33 percent also. And uh, uh, atomic batteries which uses uh, magneto hydrodynamics, the efficiency can also reach to 90 percent. Like it depends on uh, what type of material or what type of fuel we are using for the battery. What is the structure of the battery? Or what type of battery it is, so the fuel can raise uh, or the efficiency can uh, range from 0.1 percent to 90 percent also. Okay. Uh, since uh, most of the uh, since most of the uh, uh, research and development is going on as of still now, so we can expect uh, to uh, get around uh, more than 100 percent efficiency within a couple of years or within a decade. So yeah, it will like surpass the current battery technologies and it will have more efficiency and more uh, power delivery than the current battery technology. Now, uh, so uh, yeah, I have talked about the uh, nuclear battery that uses nickel citrusy, which uh, delivers like uh, 300 uh, not a per gram of power. So yeah, it's uh, developed uh, by uh, Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology along with uh, like a technology institute of the Bahar and Nobel Carbon Materials and National Institute of Science and Technology. So both of these uh, three institutes developed this nuclear battery. So yeah, we have uh, another uh, actually uh, battery that's the nuclear diamond battery. So uh, that battery actually uh, has uh, it uses uh, two uh, metallic uh, contact uh, plates, and uh, in between we have a radio uh, radiation source that is the uh, diamond. We have a normal diamond and we have an insula insulating diamond available. So there are three types of diamonds. First is the uh, uh, radiation radiating diamond. Then we have a normal diamond and we have an insulating diamond. And both of three are sandwiched between two uh, metallic uh, contact plates and it delivers the power. So uh, it's like similar to uh, solar cells. And uh, alpha and beta particles, here yeah, alpha and beta particles uh, knock off the electrons to uh, drive the current. So uh, it uses uh, uh, carbon isotope. So uh, for uh, diamond, it's uh, uh, C14, but uh, it uh, starts decaying back from C14 to C12. So that is like uh, for C14, it will have. Uh, uh, eight neutrons and uh, six protons, and for C uh, C12 it will have six neutrons and six protons. So it goes back from uh, C14 to C13 and and then to C12. So like uh, like that the decay happens and then it generates the power. Okay. Now uh, these are the carbon isotopes for the uh, diamond. And uh, here how it's uh, actually made is like uh, we uh, if you see in a nuclear reactor. So we have moderators uh, that we use. So whenever a nuclear reactor or nuclear power plant is decommissioned or like it's uh, shut down, so we have those uh, moderators available. So we can take those graphite or those uh, control rods or those moderators, and uh, we can take those uh, radioactive graphite materials or those uh, control rods or the moderators, and we can uh, use them. So uh, what happens now if we take those materials and we uh, uh, pass uh, them through? Uh, uh, sublimation process that's like uh, the solid to gas process so then we get a, uh, a, a material or a product and that uh, output material is passed through a chemical process so as to get a sheet of radioactive diamond now uh, from graphite we get uh, we reach to a radioactive diamond through certain uh, processes uh, chemical processes and other processes and that uh, uh, that radioactive uh, diamond basically acts like a semiconductor. Okay. Uh, okay. So yeah. Now the radioisotope. So uh, radioisotope is uh, basically like the fuels that we use for a uh, radio uh, for a nuclear reaction. So we have uh, atoms which has a nucleus. Which uh, gives uh, in uh, in excess energy it releases alpha, beta, and gamma particles, which goes for radioactive decay and in turn it gives radiation. So radioactive isotopes are the radioactive uh, isotopes on uh, of an element. You can call that. 
and uh, they can be uh, defined as atoms that contain an unstable combination of neutrons and protons. So uh, the radioisotope uh, is an atom uh, that has an excess nuclear energy, which, which makes it unstable and it releases uh, alpha, beta and gamma particles. And uh, during the, this process, radioactive decay happens and the radiation starts. So uh, some of the radioisotopes can be used, uh, which are used as uh, nuclear fuel like uh, radium-226. So we have 3TM, we have tantalum-180M, then uh, we have uh, technetium-99, uh, we have nickel-62, we have plutonium-238, we have strontium-92, uh, we have promethium-147. Uh, we use curium-242 and uh, curium-244 also. So these are the uh, radioactive isotopes that can be used uh, as a uh, fuel. So, yeah, and uh, so uh, this is a, a radioisotope tritium. So you can see that it's uh, covered in a glass capsule. And inside the glass cap uh, capsule, we have a uh, phosphor uh, coating. So these are the uh, reflective materials, or we can see, uh, we can uh, say them as, as the materials which hold the tritium radioactivity inside this capsule. Now, uh, what we have to consider when you look for nuclear fuels or like uh, for uh, the materials which will uh, generate the uh, nuclear power in a nuclear battery. So, uh, uh, for choosing the uh, right nuclear fuel for use is a must, and uh, like uh, uh, we should uh, also consider uh, the correct uh, new, uh, fuel before using in the nuclear battery. So, like uh, we should avoid the uh, gamma emissions in the chain decay, so they are really harmful radiations for uh, living beings and the environment. And uh, gamma radiation passes through any material and needs a high lead shielding. Okay, so lead is used as a shielding material for gamma radiation. And, and at the same time, it needs a high lead shielding also to stop it. Uh, so which uh, makes it like the nuclear battery real heavy. So we can't use gamma, uh, uh, so we can't use uh, radioisotopes which release gamma radiations. And uh, yeah, uh, half-life of the nuclear material must be taken care of. So like uh, it decides the number of years the uh, battery uh, like will run without the need to replace it. So nuclear fuel uh, like have, nuclear fuel having a half-life of around 100 years is like uh, feasible to use. Like if you're using 10 or 20 years of uh, half-life for a material, like we have to uh, change the material again after 10 or 20 years. Or we have to dispose the material and get a new uh, battery, which uh, will be again viable for 10 20 years. So uh, it's like best to use a material or an isotope which, uh, like, uh, which has a life of around uh, like 50 to 100 years. So 100 years is like the best that we choose. Uh, like, uh, like earlier uh, we have used uh, uh, we used uranium 238 uh, for nuclear batteries. Like, uh, but it gives uh, the radium. Uh, 226. So radium 226 was uh, released like as a byproduct during the decay of uranium 238. And uh, so radium 226 uh, again gives uh, bismuth uh, 214 as a byproduct. So which releases uh, and during this process it releases a lot amount of large or large amount of uh, gamma radiation. So which, which as a result, like uranium and radio, uh, radium are like uh, not used as, uh, they are not the most favorable uh, radioisotope to be used. So they are not used as a result. Uh, plutonium-238 uh, on the other hand uh, is like uh, highly used uh, uh, as a fuel because uh, like uh, it's more efficient, uh, efficient and uh, because of its efficiency. So strontium-90 uh, also releases gamma radiation, but like it doesn't, does not require a lead shielding because the radiations are too weak. So the gamma radiations from strontium-90, like it's really weak. So it doesn't require a lead shielding. And uh, another thing is that strontium-90 is not also available uh, naturally. Okay, so uh, like uh, it, uh, like it's available naturally, but like it's not, uh, it's rarely found. So like, uh, uh, so the uh, availability of nuclear fuel also, like uh, we have to also keep in mind the availability of the fuel that we're using. Suppose we are using strontium-90, then we have to consider that uh, there is a large amount of uh, availability of strontium-90 so that we can uh, like keep the battery running on uh, forever or like for the amount of years that we want the battery to run. 
so uh, yeah our tantalum uh, 180 is another uh, like a uh, key consideration you can use tantalum 180 is a half life of 10 to 15 years okay but the thing is that uh, it's uh, highly unstable at ground state uh, ground state and like uh, it can decay within 8 uh, hours so like uh, as a result like it's uh, not feasible enough to use but otherwise uh, it is a good uh, source of fuel it has that efficiency but like it has its half life is too short and it decays too uh, quickly so then uh, the efficiency drops down after some time but it delivers high amount of power. it has high amount of power so yeah these are the like fuel considerations that we must keep in mind like before uh, choosing a nuclear fuel and uh, yeah so uh, this is a experiment that uh, we can actually uh, do by uh, uh, we, if you want to do so like uh, uh, due to the like the limited amount of radioactivity that can be handled safely in a uh, house or in a uh, in a home like uh, our, our nuclear device must be uh, like necessarily be weaker than the professional devices out in the market or in the industries so yeah uh, like we cannot expect a high amount of energy or vast amounts of energy but yeah we can like experiment uh, using this so this was like a uh, first experimented by uh, city labs in the year 2005 and uh, yeah like uh, we can use this so what happens here is like uh, we have a radioactive tritium source and it emits the electrons or the energy from the tritium source so we have a uh, entry type of uh, beta voltage cell so all the electrons or all the energy is uh, like bombarded directly towards the end type of sil uh, silicon and it converts the uh, energy into electricity or uh, and it runs the load here so this is the direct conversion atomic battery now in in place in uh, in place of indirect conversion atomic battery we can use the same tritium source but what happens like we have to uh, uh, use a phosphor so the phosphor actually converts the electrons into energy and that energy is uh, again converted to uh, electricity so yeah like uh, so there is a um, uh, you can say there is a middleman in between the phosphor acts as a middleman and it converts those electrons and those uh, uh, radiations from the uh, source to uh, energy and then this energy is uh, or the heat energy is converted to electricity so it uses so it's like a photovoltaic cell much like a photovoltaic cell okay now um, if you are using it uh, as a one sided uh, as a one sided so the uh, uh, the voltage that we will get is like around 1.92 volts and the current will be around uh, 0.1 uh, microamps for for uh, this uh, one sided so this is the basic uh, model uh, circuit for the solar cell and uh, yeah like uh, if we are using a monocrystalline solar cell or a monocrystalline photovoltaic cell uh, which has a size of 450 uh, mm square and uh, we can use the amorphous solar cell uh, which have which should be have a size of 100 uh, 1092 mm square so the scale factor will be around uh, 2.4 so these are the circuit diagrams for the solar cell as a photovoltaic cell and uh, yeah, like this is the current versus voltage for the amorphous silicon cell that should be used for the nuclear that would be used for the nuclear battery and uh, this is the current versus voltage for the monocrystalline solar cell and this is the power versus voltage for the monocrystalline uh, solar cell so yeah we can see uh, these uh, current and voltage figures uh, for this uh, amorphous silicon cell and we can compare it with the current versus voltage for the monocrystalline as well as for the power versus voltage for monocrystalline solar cell and uh, yeah so these are the uh, battery power testing results so we can compare the battery configurations and uh, uh, they uh, show uh, all the results so these are the uh, uh, things for uh, different types of uh, solar cells uh, their dimensions they have different dimensions they have different reflecting uh, coating and they have different uh, sizes and all of that they have different peak powers they have different power figures uh, according to their shapes and sizes 
so the uh, so uh, we can like actually choose uh, we can have all the results and we can actually choose from these power figures and have a look like uh, what type of battery is more feasible to be used. So these are the power versus light uh, intensity. This is the power versus light intensity graph. So the green one is called a perfect uh, nuclear cell. So the red one is uh, the one which uses a uh, uh, amorphous solar photovoltaic cell and the blue one is called a monocrystalline solar cell. Now, uh, this is the current and power versus voltage uh, output of the graph for amorphous silicon solar cell. So, now this is for a double sided uh, solar cell. Earlier, we have seen the graphs for single uh, or one sided solar cell. This is for a double sided solar cell. So, uh, these are the uh, current and uh, or current versus uh, voltage uh, for a uh, beta voltage cell, but uh, this is for a theoretical. A theoretically perfect beta voltage cell. So you can see that the graphs are more uh, constant, or the power figures are like all the current figures and uh, all of them are like more uh, well distributed. But here we can see like they uh, they have certain uh, anomalies and all of that. And, uh, this is uh, for the uh, current versus voltage uh, graph for a uh, professional nuclear battery, or we can see uh, like the ones we actually are we are we can actually make in our home to actually experiment. Or in our labs, so we can, we will have these figures. So uh, uh, for the uh, perfect beta voltage, we'll have around 1.23 microwatts, and uh, like uh, 0.84 microwatts uh, for the perfect one. And for the uh, ones that uh, uh, we will be making, uh, making we'll get around 1.23 microwatts. So yeah, now this is for the DK of uh, the tritium. So we are using tritium. So this is the DK of the tritium over time and over years. So yeah, uh, it's set for around 50 years and like uh, the graph goes for 45 years. So like 45 in 45 years of time, like the amount of uh, uh, tritium and uh, like the tritium remaining and the light output it will deliver, it shows this. Okay, now this is uh, another experiment that we can do. So uh, if we uh, have a smoke alarm, or if we can uh, like actually take any kind of smoke alarm, so we can actually see that uh, uh, the smoke alarm uh, has a, uh, a, a type of uh, material inside it. So uh, this is for an uh, so the previous one. So this one for uh, this one's for this was for like a beta voltage and uh, photovoltaic. And uh, this one is for uh, alpha voltaic experiment. So the uh, smoke alarm should uh, be a, a ionization type smoke alarm. So inside that we'll get a uh, certain material. Suppose we are taking uh, americium. So americium uh, uh, has atomic number of 95 and uh, atomic weight of 243. Okay, so uh, it, ha uh, it has a half-life of 432 years. So for this experiment, we'll be taking the americium 241, which has a half-life of uh, 232 years, uh, oh, sorry, uh, 432 years. And we'll be using a uh, 2NC055 transistor, which is the NPN configuration. So uh, like uh, when we are uh, using the transistor, we uh, connect that uh, transistor to a load or an output. And uh, we uh, focus the, uh, we just remove the collector plate from the transistor. And uh, uh, in normal conditions, uh, we'll see that a semiconductor is inside that transistor. So the, uh, the semiconductor or that uh, silicon or that thing. Uh, so whenever in normal conditions, it will deliver around 0.256 of, uh, uh, volts of uh, power. But uh, whenever it uh, covered the, uh, 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 that uh, collector plate or that, uh, it is so that no light is like uh, delivered to the uh, uh, transistor. So in that condition, it will deliver minus uh, 98 uh, millivolts of power. Okay. So if we focus uh, or if we uh, throw light at the transistor, then it will deliver around 0.372 volts. But uh, now in case two, like uh, we are taking the same uh, normal condition when there is uh, no nothing attached to the uh, transistor, it just has a load. And in that condition, the transistor will uh, deliver power of 0.262 volts. 
and in a covered conditional deliver around uh, minus 100 millivolts and like when uh, this americium uh, metal is like uh, focused or directed towards the transistors so uh, the radiation uh, or the radioactive decay uh, is going through and the uh, uh, bombarded radioactive particles are uh, shown towards the transistor in that condition it will deliver around 133 millivolts so from uh, like uh, 98 or um, uh, or uh, like uh, 100 millivolts to it will deliver around uh, 133 millivolts so that's a huge difference so from uh, covered conditions or like uh, during light conditions also it delivers like uh, uh, 0.372 volts but uh, if we uh, use radiations yeah we can uh, have like uh, 133 millivolts of uh, power delivery so from that so like this is an experiment like uh, which we can do like uh, but uh, I would suggest that uh, this is just an experiment and like uh, we shouldn't uh, like uh, uh, do these experiments by our own because like uh, it, 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 you know, it can be like harmful also. Okay, so this is just an experiment. This is just to like uh, have a look at, have a look at the power figures, have a look at the efficiencies and all of that. Like this is not uh, for anyone to like play around and uh, do this thing. Okay. So yeah, like, uh, uh, this is all the thing and uh, now coming to the uh, uh, applications part like uh, 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 nuclear batteries like uh, they are uh, mainly used in wide, wide range of applications and like uh, because they uh, don't have to be maintained they don't have to be serviced we don't have to service them they can uh, withstand extreme environmental conditions and they can withstand harsh environmental conditions. So they are used in a lot of applications. So uh, we can uh, use them for microelectronics. We can use them in sensors. We can use them for small devices or for mobile devices or for medical technologies, uh, homeland security, uh, automobiles, uh, underwater technologies, uh, defense, uh, military technologies, industrial or uh, engineering technology and uh, space technologies, et cetera. So yeah, uh, here is an example of like uh, earlier, uh, uh, we used to have uh, actually uh, nuclear powered uh, pacemakers available. Uh, right now, uh, the pacemakers that we see in the market, they actually use uh, around, uh, they, uh, they actually use uh, lithium ion batteries. But uh, yeah, earlier, uh, when the pacemakers was developed, they actually used uh, radioisotopes or uh, nuclear fuels. So yeah, because at that time, like uh, they actually uh, had that uh, uh, like uh, technological advanced uh, things and that uh, uh, research was going on. So they actually uh, created a radioisotope powered cardiac pacemaker. So yeah, we can see it uses uh, plutonium 238, but yeah, uh, it has gamma radiation. But yeah, they right now we know that but uh, yeah uh, at that point of time they didn't knew that plutonium 238 is, uh, is harmful to use so they had used actually plutonium 238 in a pacemaker like it had a, a lifetime of like uh, 10 years uh, but yeah right now uh, uh, there are pacemakers available which has a lifetime of around, like around uh, for 80 to 85 years so that's a huge number like a pacemaker has a uh, uh, lifetime or it has a uh, life of around 80 to 85 years that's a huge number and uh, if we use lithium ion batteries in place of a nuclear battery in, in, a, in a pacemaker so uh, that lithium ion battery will have a hardly a lifetime of 10 to 50, uh, 5 or 10 years and within that 5 or 10 years you have to again replace the battery so yeah that's and the batteries are really costly so it's not cheap also so the lithium uh, power batteries are also, the pacemakers are not cheap Okay, so uh, now coming to the uh, uh, advantages and disadvantages of nuclear batteries. Like, uh, first, I'll uh, tell the advantages. So, uh, the nuclear batteries uh, they have a long lifespan uh, for around decades, and they are more uh, reliable sources, constant power supply. And uh, nuclear batteries uh, need no maintenance because like there are no uh, moving parts involved, unlike other type of machines or generators. And uh, it delivers high intensity and density of power. Okay. And uh, nuclear batteries are like, they are very small, portable, uh, compact and lightweight. And uh, yeah, nuclear batteries uh, give out little uh, or they actually uh, 
they were settled on no waste at all because they actually use the waste they don't uh, release any type of waste so uh, like if a nuclear battery is dead uh, we can like dispose the battery uh, there are certain dispose uh, disposable techniques or methods to dispose the battery and that nuclear battery can be again used in uh, another in the manufacturing of another nuclear battery so like there is uh, a cycle that goes on and uh, yeah uh, apart from that uh, there are certain uh, advantages also so like uh, right now the uh, initial cost of production of a nuclear battery is really high and uh, like it's not commercially available in the market also like they are mainly used for industry and other applications so uh, right now they are not available for we public okay so uh, for us like uh, and uh, it's still in the experimental and development phase and uh, the energy conversion techniques like uh, uh, they are uh, are not advanced uh, as of now, right now so yeah there are certain techniques we are uh, which are still being developed but uh, the current uh, conversion techniques like the thermionic conversion techniques or the non thermionic conversion techniques or the direct and non uh, indirect conversion techniques like they are not feasible enough to uh, give out the desired efficiency from the battery uh, so uh, new conversion techniques are being developed so that the uh, uh, also that they can deliver more power from a lithium or any type of other chemical batteries and uh, yeah uh, radioisotope sources like uh, that are uh, like uh, the used in the nuclear batteries like they are not uh, available uh, like uh, in a huge quantity as of now uh, so yeah uh, a kind of a chain market is like being developed so that uh, uh, the power plants actually uh, supply those uh, used nuclear fuels to the uh, nuclear battery manufacturers so that they can actually uh, develop nuclear batteries uh, from the waste and then they, uh, produce a new nuclear battery so uh, yeah and uh, uh, like uh, for conclusion i like to say that like uh, nuclear batteries the like uh, see nuclear batteries are around uh, from uh, 1900s like till date and uh, since like there are many uh, fixes and uh, developments and innovations and technological advancements uh, happened and uh, like as technology grows uh, 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 the need for more power and uh, heat will undoubtedly go along with it and uh, the principal concern of nuclear batteries is that uh, it involves the use of radioactive material materials so uh, like uh, people are really concerned about that like what radioactive materials will have effect on us or on the environment but uh, uh, there are uh, like uh, scientific experimentations and uh, conclusion that like uh, that state that there there is no leakage of any kind of uh, any radioactivity or radiation from the nuclear batteries because they are sealed or uh, uh, contained tightly in such a way that there is no leakage and, or there can't be any leakage and uh, yeah like uh, the uh, process of the nuclear battery uh, to the final uh, disposal and again to manufacture nuclear battery it has to uh, go through certain uh, protection standards and uh, so that is known as the radiation protection standard so it has to meet some of the radiation protection standards and uh, yeah like uh, i can like clearly see that the future is a long lasting uh, battery and it uh, lies in nuclear batteries and uh, like technologies uh, related to this uh, uh, nuclear battery so it has a lot of potential for future uses and like uh, with further research and uh, uh, experiments like uh, nuclear batteries can be made safe enough uh, to be used uh, like everywhere and uh, with the displacements of uh, like uh, ele electrodes and uh, we can like uh, uh, reduce the prices of like uh, initial uh, production and we can uh, have cheap and uh, uh, usable nuclear batteries which could be used in our day to day life and which could be used uh, by us like we people so yeah uh, that's it uh, for this topic and uh, thank you for uh, listening to me patiently. Thank you so much, sir. So, uh, participants, if you have any questions, you can raise your hand or you can type in the chat box. Feedback link is being posted in the uh, chat of the Zoom as well as the YouTube. You can see and fill it. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for your wonderful session. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Like, uh, I was like really honored like to have uh, 
uh, I, if, uh, like to have delivered this uh, session now. Uh, if anyone is uh, having any doubt or like if anyone wants to ask anything, they can ask. So, uh, are there any questions? Okay, I think uh, there are like uh, no questions. So, I just stop my screen here. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your session. There are no questions, sir. Okay, okay. Participants who have filled the form can leave now.